the states or abroad, no one's safe from the talk is a fraud. fraud. In the states or abroad, no one's safe from the talk is a fraud. The following goes beyond the show and beyond the gram to bring you all the fraud that's fit to be uncovered. This is the Fraudcast, and now here's your Fraudcaster and the woman behind Frauded by TLC on Instagram, Katrina. And welcome to the Fraudcast, my trash followers and fellow Fraudcasters. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. I am here today with a special guest co-host and a special interview that will happen at the end of the podcast. Uh, let me introduce you to Hanakawa. Hello. I butchered, I butchered that, didn't I? <laughs> that is totally fine. So it's pronounced Hanakawa, and I would never expect someone to know since it's a Japanese uh, anime character that, I don't know, I liked, so I chose that name when I chose Instagram. <laughs> so let's just clarify, that is uh, not her birth name. That is just, her, that's an online handle because we're not about giving out her first real first name exactly. and address and all that exactly y'all fans we're, we're crazy and <laughs> she doesn't need people showing up at her house the the, the the things that people can do and how uh thorough searches can be nowadays i'm, I'm scared like <laughs> i've watched 90 day for a long time and i guess i never uh picked up on the social media that was happening in the background i don't know how long this has been going but you know, yeah, it's crazy. It's a it's a crazy <laughs> fandom. Um, we're a crazy lot, and welcome to it. Uh, to the extent that you haven't been initiated into the social media aspect of it. Now, in addition to being a longtime fan of the show, you have a connection to the most recent season of Before the Ninety Days. I in do. that, Benjamin and Akini. Benjamin has a son named Grayson, and Grayson has a mother, and that is who we have here today, That's Benjamin's me. ex-wife. <laughs> so we're going to have an interview with her at the end, but the beginning, we're going to talk about all the tea and uh, the things that are going on now. So one of the things I got to say first is that this this cast so far and the show so far has been kind of boring, it's right? So like. Boring. Oh it's mind-numbingly boring. Like, I am trying my best to pay attention, but I end up, like, prepping lunches and doing dishes because... <laughs> yeah, it's it's been, it's been hard um, to get through. And hopefully that will pick up. But I will say this. I've been... Even my background checks on the cast members are coming up boring. There so far is <laughs> not a whole lot of what's going on. Uh, like, it's just... There's just not a lot. Um, so hopefully that means things are going to pick up and there's going to be some crazy shit happening. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but um, one of the things we saw this week was was Michael and Juliana. Um, Michael from Connecticut and Juliana from Brazil. They were crying into the ocean of the possibility that she wouldn't get her visa. Um, but have no fear because she got it. She got to the United States in July and they got married in October. Michael's ex-wife, Sarah, actually officiated the wedding, which, I mean, I thought I had a good relationship with my baby daddy, but I sure the hell wouldn't have him officiate my wedding, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty awesome, the one that she can do it. And, I mean, there's nothing better than being able to go, yeah, my ex-wife not only gives her blessing to us being together, but she actually take him. <laughs> <laughs> right. Have right. him. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, they touched on the show. They touched about the on the close relationship he has with his ex, and like they, they didn't really get into it on the show. But it was like, oh, is Juliana going to be okay with it? Well, I mean, obviously, Juliana was okay with it because she agreed to have her marry them, officiate the wedding. So, you know, get more power to them, I guess. But so all this crying, we don't need to worry about it. You know, whether she's a prostitute, whether she's, you know, have you ever heard of human trafficking, my boy? <laughs> and that's like a common question that they ask anyways. Right. Like I, I feel bad for them because maybe they, I think maybe the people going through the process don't know that that's a common question. Well, yeah, I think it is. But I think, I mean, it, we, we don't know what was actually asked, whether it was just the standard boilerplate questions or if they got into more detail about it. We, you know, they said that her visa was denied twice before as far as a visitor visa 
uh, and she has some things that are suspect uh, that makes them believe that, well, maybe there's a higher risk for, you know, human trafficking, prostitution, whatever, which, you know, I got to say, you know, I've got no shame against in uh, sex work. Like if that's what you're choosing to do, go for it. I have absolutely no problem with sex work, but some of it is still illegal. And so, you know, for them to ask, you know, if she's got all these stamps in her passport and whatnot, things like that, that's going to raise an eyebrow. You have to be prepared for that, I think. I'd agree. You know, don't don't act surprised when they start asking you questions about that. When, why else would you guys have met, right? <laughs> Unless you're a yacht girl. <laughs> <laughs> so there's speculation, nothing confirmed, that Juliana is what is called a yacht girl. Just Google that. Um, we'll see if we ever find anything. I don't know. That's something that could be proven or not. But there is speculation out there. Um, yeah. One thing about Juliana, I've gotten a lot of questions about. She has a scar that like or like some marks around her on her arm that like around her elbow. People have sent me pictures. People have asked me. It looks like psoriasis. Maybe it looks like eczema, something on her skin there. I can solve the mystery for you. What that is, is the scar, a uh, road rash from a motorcycle accident she was involved in. She had a lot of scars, uh, a lot, a lot. Of, she was scraped up pretty bad, a lot of road rash. So that scar on her elbow is from that. So terrible, but like mystery solved. Because <laughs> I think most people were trying to say she got beat up or. Right. And there was like, is it staph infection? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Like, I don't know. I don't know what kind of stories people are trying to make up, but um, it is from a motorcycle accident. I have seen the pictures of all of the aftermath of the motorcycle accident. If I'm able to post them, I will. Um, but that's that's what that's from. <laughs> um, and then what else do I have on them? So I did, a, I did a background check on Michael because I thought for sure someone that creepy has got to have something in his in his background you guys he's boring as fuck there's nothing in his background like it's not so much as a parking ticket that i can find in his background there's nothing like he's a bunch of cars that are not in his name well obviously because she's buying them on his credit card so they're in her name <laughs> <laughs> and then and then he has like an indiana driver's license which is not a state he lives in so i don't understand that i'm still trying to find out what's going on there maybe Maybe he has a secret identity. I don't know. But so far, oh, 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 and the biggest thing I found out is he is, in fact, 42 years old. Like, legit 42 years old. I mean, I know he looks like he's 62, but he's actually 42. Hmm. I would have said more 50. <laughs> he He's one of those guys to me that's like Michael Two-Face because in different pictures, he looks different to me. Mm -hmm. But like that episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> Am I dating myself with that? Okay. I'm old. <laughs> I'm I old, sorry. I didn't get a chance to really get into Seinfeld. My friends were, and I was just like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I don't even know why. It just it just never, it never screamed out to me. So, Emily and Sasha. Um, we saw some, I have posted some documents. Emily posted some documents. This episode, we saw the first wife, Masha, talking about the timeline of events and it to me it sounded like she was saying that Sasha got the second wife pregnant and then went to the first wife Masha and told her she want he wanted a divorce that's what it appeared to be saying the documents we have tell a different story uh the divorce from his first wife happened in 2012 and his second child wasn't born until 2014. So uh, that's not to say that he maybe wasn't with the woman. We don't know, but we know that the birth of the child came several years after the divorce was done. So whatever shenanigans TLC is trying to pull with that. Right. Storyline. I mean, I mean, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff that could probably happen between, you know, people sometimes lose children or who knows. But he seems like he's the, what is it, serial divorcer? <laughs> <laughs> he's, ju he's just made mistakes and he just happened to marry them. That's all. Oh, God. I cringed when I heard that. I was like, oh. 
especially since it was coming from Emily herself, I'm like, just... Emily. I don't know. Emily, don't know. poor sweet Emily. <laughs> I, yeah. Oh, poor sweet Emily. <laughs> She's young. She's probably love struck. Yeah. This is her. This is her first. You know, it's probably her first marriage. It's probably her first. I'm. I'm assuming it's her first baby, and so all that like newness is is taking over. Yeah. Nothing can go wrong. Now here's something else. So people are talking about like, uh, after this episode, you know, with Masha the first wife talking about, oh, how he can leave his kids and the the two kids in, in Russia and go to America and stuff. From what I understand is their intent is get money from the show, which like the show pays like a thousand dollars in an episode or something. It's not a lot, but is the money, use the money from the show to be able to bring over the other kids to America is the game plan sure that's the game plan sure <laughs> i mean he sees he sees the sun what only on holidays that's what it says i mean i know it's so weird but emily you know is out there being you know captain save a but is trying to say that he's being you know portrayed wrong and he actually does see his his kids a lot more than that i don't know i you know how do i how do i verify whether he is or isn't i'm not taking a trip to russia anytime soon so yeah <laughs> we we know what she has said about it which is no that's not accurate she, he does see his kids more than what the show portrays but given what we know about tlc frauding i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't doubt that at all but given that they're they're trying to portray this the storyline of the divorce and the second baby time about getting the other girl pregnant and then asking for the divorce and that's not actually true because we have the documents that show otherwise mm -hmm. so and emily posted those but i also had them as well from another source so yeah and i didn't catch her posting it does she does she have a reason for posting it did she know I think, what it said and what it would i think what happened was the early premiere the first hour of the show came out and that scene was in it and she said that's not accurate because i have these documents and so she was trying to refute that scene gotcha that came out ahead of the actual show that when it when they because you know tlc does this early premiere of the yeah and they first hour the hell out of everyone when they do it <laughs> <laughs> and they never they're never consistent about when they put it out about how many days in advance or whatever and and stuff but i mean i admit it's nice to be able to sometimes watch that and not have to sit through two hours of it plus pillow talk on sunday nights yeah but anyway so that's what we've got on emily and sasha at this point um they're pretty active it looks like on social media so um uh, emily seems like she likes to refute a lot of what is going on um in real time so we'll see what else comes out with them i guess and moving along, the only other things that I've been able to find is we've had <laughs> beekeeper Anna of Anna and Marcel. The, her background came up with this arrest in 2002. And it was something about she was a like, drunk and um, domestic violence or something. Um, she's not had anything since then. And from what I understand, she actually... Um, she takes care of mentally challenged individuals. And if she had a questionable suspect history, they wouldn't allow her to do that. Like she wouldn't pass their, their background checks. So that's true. So she does that in addition to her beekeeping, which she has her like Etsy shop for the, the honey and whatnot. Yeah. Um, that's it. So she was arrested in May of 2002. The charges were actually brought in June of 2002, which is why the documents make it look like it was May and June. It was just the one arrest where the charges actually came up and they didn't, she got charged in a month later or a couple weeks later. So that's what we got. That's it. That's it. That's how boring the season is so far, you guys. <laughs> There's nothing. The beekeeper had an arrest in 2002. That's how exciting things are. So what happens then, though, is the rest of the cast from other seasons decides to have a weekend and things shit, got, shit blew up this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, did you, are you aware of any of this stuff about Darcy and a leaked video or something that sh shows that she allegedly cheated on Tom? Are you aware of any of this? I caught pieces of it because I actually follow, um, actually follow Emma. So I saw her post when it came up. Um, but it was just a, a, a picture of a potential video. I wasn't sure if like the video actually made its way anywhere. Um, and she also had said that she didn't even watch it herself. And I don't know if she did eventually, but, um, yeah, I did follow that to the extent of my, that my attention span could. <laughs> <laughs> Agree, right? Right. Cause when Darcy started posting on there, I was like, yep, yeah, nope. <laughs> Next. <laughs> So to the best that I can put together is that Emma, who is Tom's sister, posted this screen grab of what appeared to be a video accompanied by um, a guy who was saying that she, that he had a affair or relationship with Darcy and that she cheated on Tom with this guy and Darcy's crazy and her exes are nice guys. And so that's what I saw. And like you said, it's not the actual video. It's just a photo, like a screen grab of a video still. So we don't know what the video would have said. But so what happens then is I guess this guy comes on, on Instagram and defending himself and saying that uh, he pulls out the standby excuse of I was hacked. <laughs> so but that's it, it gets better you guys it's not just that he was hacked but he claims that after he commented on a picture of Darcy and Darcy replied to him then his phone started making weird clicking noises and suddenly <laughs> Emma apparently had hacked his phone and got these pictures and posted them is what happened it was after he commented on a picture and that triggered it. Gotcha. <laughs> so that's what we're dealing with. Okay. Is is Emma working with Colty to hack into stuff? Remember he, he oh, posted right. something about hacking into things <laughs> after opening a picture. Oh my god! All these cast members are freaking professional hackers now. <laughs> yeah, you guys. No, no. Well, and then he was like, "I don't even have Twitter," and this picture allegedly came from a Twitter account. And so here's the thing, like, I don't know this guy from Adam, right? I don't know who he is. I wasn't that invested in the original story of what Emma posted. I don't pay attention to a lot of what Emma posts because she is not a truth teller. And she is, uh, she's um, part and parcel of Tom's fraud, all the fraud that Tom likes to perpetrate. Emma is right there with him on that. So I don't believe anything that comes out of Tom's or Emma's mouth. And so... When she posted this stuff, I kind of only gave it like half attention because I just was like, well, whatever. And then this other stuff came out and this guy started talking to me um, and he, but right before he deleted his Instagram, he left me a bunch of voice notes in my DM box. And by bunch, <laughs> I mean a lot. There was like 10. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> so there's a lot. And um, we're actually going to play some for you. Um, but basically, the gist of what he says in the post that I posted on, on my Instagram and that you're going to hear in these upcoming clips is that he and Darcy had started an online friendship and they got really, really tight with each other. And it sounds like he caught feelings, but they have actually never met each other in person. So whatever this video allegedly shows, according to him, it's not it's not going to be the two of them together because he claims over and over that he's never actually met her in person, but that they had this great thing going. He was totally in love with her. Um, he's like a lovesick puppy dog. Um, you'll hear it. I'm going to play these. And then... Uh, I guess something happened. They had a falling out over something and now they're no longer friends and he's really sad and dejected about it. And he actually has a message for Darcy uh, in this message um, that he sent. So we're going to play you some clips of that. Um, hand on Bible. He's never actually met her. I can put my hand on the Bible and say, I've never slept with Darcy. I've never even met Darcy. 
we only used to talk on the phone and video chat. She's actually a really, really nice person. She does deserve the crap that she gets. But I've lost a good friendship. We don't we, we fell out today. Um, and I'm gutted, to be honest. But yeah, I did have feelings for her. I started developing feelings. But um, and I think she had feelings for me as a as a friend. I think she she obviously cared about me, or we wouldn't speak every day. But I'd just like to put on record that I never slept with Darcy. I never met Darcy. I never messaged Emma or Tom. That was hackers. That was not me. Um, I would not jeopardise well, my friendship with Darcy, but if Darcy is listening, I love you. You're a good person. I'm grateful that you were in my life for that short period of time. I'm sorry all this mess has happened. I'm sorry that people have went out to try and destroy us and make me look bad and make you look bad. I know you're a good person. I know you're not a cheat. And um, I wish you the best if we don't get to speak again. You deserve it. You deserve the best. All right. So there you have it, you guys. Um, hand on Bible. He's never met her. But she's a lovely, lovely person. And Darcy, if you're listening, he um, he misses you. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> oh. Oh, so, so yeah, so sweet. So move, <laughs> moving on, Darcy is moving to LA. We know this now. She's announced that she's moving to LA. I don't know what you think about that, but I, I, LA should be warned. She's coming <laughs> from New York City, right? <laughs> Connecticut. Connecticut. Okay. All right. So, I mean. LA is very different. I think she'll she'll know. Um, <laughs> if you ever saw, if you've ever seen Pretty Woman, yes. And the guy's walking. He's like, "Welcome to Hollywood." <laughs> That's all I can think about. Because <laughs> I'm from yeah. California, so I'm like, so sure, am I. <laughs> LA, have fun. <laughs> Have fun. Yeah, I, you, you know, know, I don't know what her what her end game is with that, but we know that she's had a history of trying to have like a pilot, and she's been on three seasons. She's filming another season of you know ninety days. She's you know her father bankrolls everything. He they have a music video. She has a music video with Stacy. Lock your number, you guys. And for those of you who are new to the fandom, um. Yeah, look that up. Darcy and Stacy, the Silver Twins, have a have a music uh, single that they put out. They had the the pilot of the Twin Life, so she's been trying to get in on TV, and she's been you know relatively successful in the tr world of trash reality TV and all of her ninety day yeah, appearances. She, she is like ninety day fiance's like staple. She is staple staple food. Like she's <laughs> she's everywhere there. So maybe maybe she has a new show like Darcy does LA or something. I really want to see Darcy goes to rehab. Oh. Hey, I went to rehab in LA, so maybe, you know, there's a lot of good rehabs out there. There is actually. And it, and you know, it's always nice to have a new start, so maybe a new start would be good for her. Um, yeah. We don't know what's happening with Stacy because twins. Is she moving out there too? We don't know what's happening with the kids because, you know, the, she shares custody of the kids with the father, which he's out in Connecticut. So I don't know. We don't know any of those details yet. Uh, Darcy's side of things is always very, very tight lipped as far as leaks go and things like that. So it's kind of hard to get information like inside production information. She has her own production assistant on oh. on set she's the only one that does has that so she's a tlc darling she's not going to say or do anything to rock the boat with tlc tlc is not going to do anything like they're they're very tight-lipped about it there's no leaks coming from the silva side um so it's always it's always That's a challenge true. trying to get <laughs> information about them for those who care some people don't care about them anymore they're like oh my god i'm over it but <laughs> You know, I've said it before that Darcy reminds me of me back in the day before I got sober. And I think a lot of people relate to her. So in a lot of ways, she she's kind of relatable in her search for love and things like that. So, you know, she's she's got certainly got an audience. That's for sure. That's true. 
speaking of audiences, um, Ashley, Trashley of Ashley and Jay, and Courtney, Swit Courtney, Swit Courtney of Courtney and Antonio of the original Before the 90 Days were in the Dominican Republic this past weekend. And Instagram blew up with <laughs> videos. Did you get to see these videos? Not all of them. <laughs> do you want to do you want to describe for the listeners what these videos were? I, I <laughs> it reminded me of like the outrageous tiki days at college. <laughs> like a girls gone wild video. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. I'm like. Because, okay, wait, I thought that this uh, trip was supposed to have more of the 90-day fiancé right. celebrities on Correct. there. Like, like and David and Annie and stuff. I don't know what happened. Okay. I, I don't know. They didn't go. I just don't, I don't know why, but we know they didn't go. Other people were there. Uh, these Bachelor in Paradise rejects. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how it works because I don't watch that show, but... Um, people who have appeared on Bachelor in Paradise, which is, I understand it, people who were formerly on The Bachelor. So they're like double, triple rejects or something. I'm not entirely sure how it works. Like, <laughs> I don't know. They go Temptation Island next or I don't, I don't. <laughs> or the MTV show X on the Beach. Have you seen that one? It's phenomenal I, trash. I have not. Oh my God. It's so trash. <laughs> it's so trash. They have like your exes showing up, coming up out of the ocean, walking onto the beach. And they all just put them in a house and give them a bunch of booze and shit just happens. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's a train wreck, <clears throat> but it looks like Ashley and Courtney are in the Dominican Republic. They were filming for a new reality show with these bachelor in paradise rejects that has been confirmed by multiple sources. Now that this is a new show. I don't know what it's called. I don't know what the premise of it is. I feel like they should just call it white girl wasted and, and be done with it because like, let's just be real. That's what it is. Right. <laughs> oh. I mean, these were some bad videos, you guys, like I'm just, well, I'm glad that social media wasn't a thing when I was in college, but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I didn't do anything that crazy, but you know, there's nothing on Facebook that documents it. So <laughs> I, I'm good. Yeah. You guys, if you haven't seen this stuff, these videos, they're, they're out there. They've been reposted all over the place. I have not reposted them, but they have been, they, they are out there. Um, it's, they, they all get super, super drunk and like they're pole dancing. And then like Ashley is in a bachelor in paradise dancing sandwich and they fall and like Courtney flashes or hoo-ha it's, it's, it's a mess. It is white girl wasted girls gone wild, like revisited. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> there we have it. What else do we have? We have Jorge of Jorge and Fisa had lost 125 pounds in prison. I know. He looks so good. You know, the prison diet apparently works. Um, <laughs> no, well, E! Online did an exclusive interview with him, which I think was fantastic. He talks about how he gets up at 4 a.m. and works out a couple times a day with some cellmates or bunkies or whatever they are with him. And they work out and he eats, you know, as healthy as you can in carb rich land of prison food. But he said he stopped eating, you know, fast food and, and drinking and he had all these, you know, sodas and all these unhealthy habits on the outside. And that being on the inside, he has been able to have a much healthier lifestyle. And he's sort of like restarting himself to like start fresh with Anfisa when he gets out, which is good because have you seen Anfisa lately? Yeah. Girl's he, jacked. He, <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine him like going, it's close to me getting out and look at that like <laughs> oh you're gonna need a strict uh a strict diet and exercise routine to keep up with that yeah but you know hopefully you know it looks like they you know the the they really seem to want this new fresh start for when he gets out i think he's scheduled for his first parole look at parole in 2020 so at some point i don't know what what month but he is in your neck of the woods in arizona so, oh, really? I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, he's in the Arizona Department of Corrections. <laughs> <laughs> I probably drive by him every day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's in one of the tent cities and he's out there on the chain gang. Oh, no. 
<laughs> He's in tent city right now. It's actually good weather. So, um. <laughs> well, what's good weather for Arizona? My God. Um, you know, it's funny because when we hit like 91, we're like, oh my God, it's getting cooler. And <laughs> most people are like, wait, 91? I'm like, you don't understand. Like once it gets past 103, it's just, it's just hot. There's no, yeah, like no. Our, our homeless get brain scrambled. It's that bad. That's just um, terrible. I mean, I live in DC and, you know, our summers are pretty bad in the heat and, you know, you guys know I have multiple sclerosis, and mm -hmm. one of the things that accompanies that is a heat intolerance and a thermoregulation mm -hmm. problem where my body can't thermoregulate and the heat flares things up. And then once I get hot, I can't cool off. So heat is not my friend. So, you know, it's starting to cool off here, but, um, you know, which is, which is nice in some respects, but I, yeah, <laughs> it's DC cool, which is like 47 <laughs> degrees today. So anyway, <laughs> moving along, we have um, Corey was spotted in Ecuador at the Ecuador airport. We had a tipster um, who works at the airport. Uh, they spotted Corey flying into Ecuador. What does that mean? I don't know because Evelyn posted this post about it's my bar and I started at first. We'll figure out the investments later, which makes it sound like they're breaking up and having to split their assets. Yeah. But he's there. Mealy mouth Corey. Shut up, Corey. Uh, <laughs> he's terrible. I, I don't even know. Because even like her Instagram is bipolar too. You know, it's everything is great. Don't hate me. And then I'm going to take a picture with this guy who isn't my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny me. because those pictures of her, I guess it was Raul again. Those pictures, she posted some that surfaced the same day that Corey was spotted flying into Ecuador. Yes. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know if, if, if Corey's learned anything, if they're really broken up, if, uh, if it's all for show. I know Corey was really gunning to try to get a second season. And my understanding was Evelyn didn't want anything to do with that. Uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I guess we'll find out what We'll see what else comes out on their Instagrams, but that's what we know right now with them. Um, family Libby, we talked about them a little bit uh, last episode, how they were in Moldova filming the wedding. The, it was a long trip. I understand that TLC may be interested in Family Libby the way they were in Family Chantel for a spinoff, which... God, yeah, you, you know, oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like... If you could see the look she just gave me, oh my god. No. <laughs> Tell me, describe, describe that, because I think you would be accurately describing what the listeners think, too. I, I couldn't even watch The Family Chantel. One, the title of it actually pisses me off, because I don't, un, I don't understand what it's supposed to grammatically be saying. The Family Chantel. Okay, I can... It's about the family, Chantel. I don't know. No, so, so... <laughs> I think it was, I think it was, um, Pedro, the way he speaks his English in one of the seasons had referred to it, her referred to it as this is instead of saying it's Chantel's family, he referred to it as it's the family Chantel. So that spawned via Reddit and all the rest of the social media at the time was that's how everybody's referred to. Gotcha. So, so like it's family Reddit or, uh, family read it see look there <laughs> in. it's just how it is right so um it's family chantel it's you know brother chantel it's mother chantel that's that's why everybody's referred to in those kinds of terms is because it's it's harkens back to pedro originally saying it's the family chantel so then it spawned everything else gotcha yeah so back to that so back to your feelings about the family libby no <laughs> that's my feelings no it's just a hard no please don't. i don't know if it's if it's actually going to happen but there's there was talk apparently somebody chuck is saying i'll just say this chuck is saying that tlc wants this whether that's accurate or not i don't know but um my source came via what chuck said gotcha like there's so a, there's so many other families that they could have a very good spinoff right that people actually care about like Hamily jihoon 
Yeah. And they're clean anal. And they're dog. Oh Just my god! A, a show about the dog. <laughs> the dog jumping into the <laughs> yes. into the purse. Oh my god, you guys! If you didn't see that, go back and watch uh, the other way episodes scenes with Devin and Ji Hoon where the puppy jumps up into the purse. It's fantastic. Yeah. So what else is going on around social media? Nicole of Nicole and Azin upped her cameo prices to a hundred dollars. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm, I want to know if people are buying it or if it's a hundred dollars to deter people from buying it. Cause she doesn't want to do it anymore, but she need doesn't she need the money? I don't know. She's, she's doing her own, like, uh, clothing auction on Instagram, right? Oh, God. The LuLaRoe. <laughs> <laughs> With the multi-level marketing stuff, which is a whole other thing, which if you guys haven't listened to the podcast, The Dream, go and do that because it's amazing. <laughs> About multi-level marketing. Complete side note. Complete side yeah. note. I mean, she but, upped hers to 100 but they're all doing funky things with their prices. Like, some are severely underpriced, and some are like, there's absolutely no way. Yeah, and I wonder, like, I don't know what the pay structure is for Cameo. Like, how much of a cut Cameo the company takes, and how much goes to the person. Like, I haven't looked into that. So, if you guys are out there and you know, let me know. <laughs> um I'm just curious, and if anybody has any intel on why Nicole upped her cameo prices, yeah, no, no, um, yeah. So, some other inside intel is that I have learned this week is Laura, <laughs> lying Laura, our dear friend, lying Laura, who's still down in Ecuador, still a drunk mess, doing God knows what down there. Um, apparently she has a new boo. She's got a new love interest. And this guy apparently bought her a moped and has given her cash. Uh, she's also claiming that Liam took all her money out of a joint savings account they had and that she is broke. So this guy will give her money. Now, it's not Raul, right? The no. new boo is not not him as she posted not. that one picture. <laughs> no, God, no. No, no, it's not Raul. Um, my understanding I, of his name, um, I don't think I'm authorized to release that the name yet, but um, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon I can release that. <laughs> um, nobody, it's not Muhammad. I will say that. It's not Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad is not trying to, to uh, woo Laura, but she, Laura's got somebody down there. And so we're um, waiting more information on that. Um, that is a, a, a an evolving story. So as I get more information, I will update you. The last um, little bit of Around the Gram today is for those of you guys who know John Walters and John and Rachel of Before the 90 Days, uh, a lot of you guys have asked previously that I like why I started my account. Well, my account started because of them, because there was evidence to show that they had met prior to filming. And this was before the 90 Days, so they were not supposed to have met. So there was some evidence that showed that they might have met and they had these GoFundMes and whatnot. So the account started as um, follow our fraudy tale because they had an account that was follow our fairy tale and they're saying they're frauds. So it started because of that. We started posting some of the, the information that we were finding. Never did find any smoking gun evidence that they had met before. And then a lot of you guys know John Walters, Cunt Choppers. Um, he likes to call people cunts and he gets in fights with internet trolls. He's all over the place, um, defending the honor of women everywhere, uh, hoping, telling people they, he hopes they get cancer and die. He and I had it out over something he said, I reposted it. He reported it. It got pulled. I went to Instagram jail. It was a mess. We blocked each other and we've, it's been beautiful ever since. Well, John has listened to the broadcast and he sent me a message telling me that it was actually really, really good. And he really endorsed it and that he felt that I was doing a great job uncovering the fraud behind reality TV. 
so we had a long conversation and ultimately, you know, I told him that, you know, I, yeah, there was never, never any smoking gun evidence that you guys had met prior. And so, um, he asked me to erase or to, to delete the posts that I had made. And my policy is generally, I don't delete posts, but if I, something is, is wrong, if I posted something that is wrong, or if I learn new information, I will post a retraction. Like I'll post, make a new post with the correction in it. So I did that with this. A lot of you guys saw it. They had matching tattoos of the GPS coordinates of where they had their first meeting, which matches up to Paddington train station. Um, so my thought is that's a, if it was a fraud that they actually, that that was because on the show, for those of you guys who don't know, she flew into Heathrow and then took a little shuttle to, to Paddington train station. And that's where they met for the first time. And the reason why he didn't meet her at the airport was because they couldn't get the filming, didn't have permission to film at the airport. So they were given an, an option. It'd be either she flies into Heathrow and then they re- like refilm reenact the meeting somewhere else where they could film and pretend that was their first meeting or she takes a shuttle to Paddington station and they film the actual first meeting and apparently it was very important to John that they filmed the actual first meeting so that's what happened so allegedly that's the backstory <laughs> there so they got matching tattoos of those coordinates the GPS coordinates which I spent way too much time back researching and like whatever you call it, like and putting the coordinates and putting the <laughs> coordinates in and seeing where they pointed to and going to Paddington station and find, find, you know, finding a reverse searching it. And it's, it is. So if Paddington station is not in fact where they first met, then that's a hell of a commitment to a fraud. So <laughs> right. I'm gonna say that that's permanent. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, and, and maybe, maybe they did, if they did meet before and it was at Paddington station, I mean, even though I would think that if they had met before and there was no film crew involved, their first meeting would have been at Heathrow because he would have picked her up at the airport. It just logically makes sense. Right. So the, the reasoning about meeting at Paddington, it had to do with the film crew. So all in all, looking at the evidence, it, I, I, I can't say that they had met before. So my conclusion is that it's more likely than not that they that was their first meeting. So I posted about that. John Walters and I have made up. Cunt Choppers himself has made up and gave me a public <laughs> a public ringing endorsement. Five star review. I saw like, that. I think I just saw some pigs flying by. <laughs> um, hell has frozen over. <laughs> There's been, I don't know what's happening in the world right now, but there you go. So, I mean, are we friends? I wouldn't say we're friends, but, you know, we made up and moved along. So, like, there you have it. Boop. Case closed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so that's what I have. That's what I have of all the tea uh, going on this week. Uh, there's not a lot of fraud coming up yet. So um, this is what I got for you. Um, with that, <laughs> let's get into the interview. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what all of you are tuning in for anyway, right? So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. So, well, first, you're a 90-day fiancé fan. Yes. Right. How did you first get into the fandom? I started it because my mom found it on TLC. And it was one of those, like, just, just watch it with me kind of things. And so we watched it together, and I liked it because, you know, I like trash TV. Um, but she's a diehard fan now. Like, you can't tell her any of this is fake. <laughs> she would probably oh, bless her heart. She would probably listen to this podcast and go, no, I'm pretty sure he loved her. And it's, it's, it's actually funny because we had uh, talked about the whole Caesar fiasco and some of the stuff that was coming up about him being a paid actor and she just pushed it aside. She goes, no, I think he's being catfish. Poor guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, bless her heart. I know. I, I love it because, like, she's, uh, she is into almost every show. I think she got me into, like, My 600-Pound Life. 
and all, also a very good show. I love that show. And then also, um, God, what's the other show? The 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 Duggar family. She watched. Oh God, no! All of that, and I actually had to tell her no. <laughs> After like the sixteenth kid, I was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I just can't. And so yeah, she's but always, with ninety days. With ninety days, I can because you're stuck. I was stuck, and then they made a happily ever after, and then they made a, a what is it? What now? And then the before the ninety. So you know, it's just it's nonstop. You know, ninety day um, bombardment, and I just unfortunately I can't stop watching it. <laughs> so, this is a show that you are very familiar with and suddenly you find out that your ex-husband is going to be on the show surprise yeah so how did that go <laughs> like how did you find that out what happened so uh one of the days that i uh was meeting him to drop uh grayson off for the weekend he was like oh by the way um i applied for the 90 day fiance show and they're actually going to cast me and at that moment, I was in the, whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. And so I get in my car and literally like halfway on the free, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Why are you doing that? I'm like, you, you know this show, right? Like. Did he, did he watch it with you? Yes. He was, a, he was, <laughs> he was there with my mom when they would watch it together and be like, oh my God, with his friend. I don't know. I, I don't know uh, why he chose to. Maybe he wanted to show his journey. But, um, yeah, when he told me at first, I didn't believe. I didn't believe him. And because, okay. you know, he told me. And then I think maybe like three months went by before they actually started filming. So um, at that point, I was like, okay, then this is real. And... <sighs> <laughs> okay we're, we're gonna get more into that in a minute um about the the that filming but first i gotta backtrack because how on earth did someone like ben nail sorry that was a bad <laughs> <laughs> snag really? someone as gorgeous as you um, I know, right? Well, Grayson, I, I get how, asked how, that question. how, how, why? I, I don't know. Like, I, I always remind people that that was like ten years ago, and um, you know, it's that vanilla answer of you're different people, but we really were. Like, I was in college still. I was, I was finishing my last year, so I was a junior going into senior year, and um, I met him through a college friend at the time, and it was just. I don't know. I never know how to answer that question because, you know, my uh, my view on myself back then wasn't that I was some, you know, hot babe to be one, you know, so, you know, I don't know. I mean, because we, we, you know, I speak on behalf of the fandom. Everyone's like, how gorgeous are you and how gorgeous is Akini and how does somebody who's, well, you know, Ben. I know. And I don't know. How I, does it, what? Why? How? <laughs> Let me, so you guys met in college 10 years ago. It, it was 10 years ago. It was, it was 2009. Because I was okay. just, I was just uh, finishing up my degree and, and unfortunately thinking I wanted another one. So, yeah, it was about that time that I met him. So then you get married because... <laughs> Not not so yes. not so soon. So he um, we dated for maybe seven months when he proposed. I think it was seven months, and then we were engaged for about two years. I actually, oh wow! Okay, yeah, so I had very to, different. Yeah, I, <laughs> I had to write out the timeline because even I forgot. I was like, <laughs> so I, I'd have to do the same. Let me, so. let me grab the notes. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she has a notebook, y'all. I do. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got married in 2012. And so okay, uh, okay. And then you had little beautiful Grayson. We had him. So I got I I got pregnant like a month after we got married. Um, and then I had oh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had um, I had him in uh, like the summer of 2013. Okay. All right. So, so then, I mean, 
everything is swimming on going along swimmingly and you guys are living happily ever after in your you know house with the white picket fence no <laughs> not so much uh house no um <laughs> you know there was a <laughs> there was a lot of uh you know, issues with getting up on our feet. Cause I mean, it, it's so many rewinds what happened. Um, before we got married, we went to Wisconsin for four months because he had a job opportunity that he thought he wanted to pursue. So we literally dropped everything and moved to Wisconsin and failed miserably out there for four months. And so we came back <clears throat> and ended up just staying with my mom. And okay. of course, the first thing you do when you're financially unstable and have no house of your own is get pregnant, right? <laughs> right. That is the <laughs> Tiffany and Ronald. I'm looking at you. <laughs> that is the recipe. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, Grace, <laughs> Grayson was born, and um, honestly, about a year and a half later, uh, we separated. So I think I think my son was just turning one when I was starting to not want to be there anymore. So okay, and so on the on the show, Ben talks about how there was, I think the words he used was like a breakdown in trust or something like that. Um, trust issues, <laughs> the trust issues, <laughs> and and from what I understand from my other one of my other sources who has given me permission and authorized me to say who this other source is, one of Ben's brothers has given me oh she's like oh shit <laughs> i've been talking to one of ben's brothers who's given me a lot of information like the information that i've leaked over the course of the season and whatnot has not come from you as you know it has come from another source and that other source is one of ben's brothers so he told me that there was cheating involved on Ben's part. Like Ben cheated on you, not you cheating on him. Although Ben alludes to it on the show that makes it sound like it was you. The real story is that Ben actually cheated on you. What can you say about that? Um, or what will you say about that? <laughs> what will I say? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's not my, it's not, it's never my intention to elaborate on the, you know, the whys. Um, Understandable. And, and I'm surprised because, I mean, I, I, when we did get divorced, you know, I did confide in a lot of people and friends. And so, you know, in the universe, in the universe it's out there that infidelity did happen. Um, and because of that, there were trust issues. And because of those trust issues, I filed for divorce. Okay. I think that's probably about all that we're going to get on that. <laughs> <laughs> But there are other, um, there's some other interesting allegations regarding that, um, that I don't have verification for because apparently these alleged Craigslist posts that he posted allegedly are, don't exist anymore. So, um, allegedly, <laughs> those are out there. Yeah. Well, especially since I think Craigslist shut down their whole personals thing. Oh, did they? Because oh. that was a mess. Yeah. So you can't even like all the shenanigans that would happen. What is it? The no strings attached, right? Right. <laughs> Looking for one night stands. Uh -huh. Yeah. Those are yep. all gone now. So, um, and, yep. Yep. So if he had probably if, for good reason, hypothetically, if he had posted any of those, they would be gone now as well. Hypothetically, hypothetically. Yes, they would be gone. Okay. Um, so over the course of the season, I've posted some information about Ben, um, including his car being repossessed and being evicted from his apartment a couple of times, uh, bad with money management. Those That information, what can you tell me about those allegations that I've posted? So um, I guess, well, where to start? Um, we could start with the evictions because I know that came out and I know that you posted, um, you even posted court records yep. that they were going, you there found was on that. Wage garnishment actions against him for the eviction. Yeah, um, which is unfortunate, but I mean, it's, it's, it's the truth. It's out there. Um, I only knew about the first apartment eviction. So I didn't know that the second apartment that he was at he was evicted from but i mean 
I would believe it. <laughs> um, <laughs> his car getting uh, repossessed, I, I am saying yes, that's true, because I had gotten a few calls asking for money to settle the debt that was owed. Oh, um, from and him. I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't know that I was put as a reference. I was like, "Oh no, you shouldn't have put me as a reference." <laughs> 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 Only because I was caught off guard, and I was like, "He what?" Like I don't. I don't know. I don't talk to him like that anymore. So, um, they were looking for money. So I can only. Uh, I can only assume that the end of that was getting his car repossessed. Okay, so. Now, one of the other things that um, I have heard from Brother Ben is that when he was evicted from the most recent apartment, I guess that's the second one, that's when he Mm -hmm. was going to be moving in with his pastor, which is where he lives now, correct? Correct. Okay, so he rents a room from his pastor. And I know Brother Ben said that he took all of Ben's booze that Ben had so that Ben wouldn't look bad at moving into the pastor's house. So the sanctimonious Ben that we sh- see on the show, like schooling a Kini about let's not drink anymore. You know, Ben has his, you know, he's, I'm, we're not saying he's an alcoholic or anything by any stretch, but he enjoys a drink. Yeah, no. And I can only speak for when I was with him, but there was no problem with having a drink at all. Like I didn't drink that often in the first place, but if I bought, you know, a bottle of wine or whatever, I wasn't, I wasn't shamed for it. And we had, I mean, we literally had a cabinet full of liquor. So, so this, I mean, like (laughs) he didn't say, you know, school you and tell you now you're only going to have one. You're not going to have two. Right. Yeah. No. And if anyone knows my personality, like, excuse me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You don't seem like, well, that, that leads us nicely into the next, you know, segment, you know, questions that I had is, you know, Ben comes across in that regard as, as both this very controlling kind of sanctimonious dick, but at the same time, Akini tells him that he's not very alpha. And so what can you tell us about what you see of Ben on the show in those regards versus the Ben that you were married to? Yeah. So, I mean, as far as the alpha part goes, I don't think he's ever been super alpha. He's not, he hasn't been a pushover, but, um, God, I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to explain it. So on the show, like how he was nervous at the, you know, the bride price ceremony and everything that, that is who I would be used to seeing in a nervous situation. Like there was no, Oh, he's just pretending to be scared or, I don't know. Okay, so that would um, that seemed accurate. No, he's he yeah, I, I, he, that that seemed accurate to me. He's not very like, you know, must do this or, you know, con- controlling in that sense. Now, um controlling situations, um it's it's hard to speak um outside of when I knew him and outside of the marriage, but there were, there were times where it seemed like it had to be his way, uh, or it was major, it was issues, you know, and the only, only silly example I have is, um, I'm a gamer as some people may know. And, uh, I had recently gotten back with a group of friends who did games in the evening. And so after I put, uh, my son to bed. I wanted to enjoy an hour or so of playing understandable. The game. Yeah, you know that didn't fly well with him. Yeah, that didn't fly well with him. And his answer was, "Well, you will need to wake up at you know four a.m. and play." Wow. So it doesn't interfere with our us time. And so you know you see both sides of like, well, maybe he's just like, well, I want to spend time with my wife. But then there's also the how it went about him, him you dictating know. to you so su- versus you guys yeah, as a couple. instead of a suggestion, exactly. Hey, why don't we figure out time to spend together to, you know, do what, what other than this is my directive to you because you right. know, I don't approve. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it's interesting too, because, you know, we, the, the picture that I've gotten of who Ben is from, 
brother Ben you know, doesn't match up with a lot of what we see of Ben on the show, but that is like because of what he says, not how he acts. So, you know, it's yeah. hard. Like his personality comes through on the show. Pretty. That's him. That's what pretty we see. Well. What yeah. We see. What? Yeah. The, okay. situ- the situational, you know, how TLC is portraying, say, his life situations is where it's like. OK, <laughs> well, we're going to get into that. Um, OK, so he was poor at money management then is what you're saying yeah i mean combined with probably not making much okay i mean he got evicted and had his car repossessed that was after you after you guys got divorced that was that was way after okay. me okay. yeah and so you know one would say that you know maybe he bit off too much more than he could chew financially okay. you know we all think when we do our budgets right. that we're going to be able to afford this and afford that but he you know. he was inaccurate in his assessment of himself okay okay so um you 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 touched on um his life situation being portrayed by tlc tlc in a certain manner and that not being accurate um i think the biggest of that is the situation with Grayson and his money, right? So he alludes to, and I think he actually says that like, he doesn't have money because you're a gold digger digger who takes all his money and he pays all of this money in child support. And he's this very active and involved parent is the, is the um, image that is, is portrayed in the show. What can you tell us about the accuracy or rather the inaccuracy of that? Yeah, so, and this this is where <laughs> it goes on of, of uh, hopefully not coming across as bashing, um, but. Okay, well, I'll ask this. D- does, does Ben pay child support? He does not, and so. And why is that? The reason why he doesn't is because there is no court order for it. So the way our divorce decree goes is that it's, as the court sees it, we have Grayson 50-50. As the court sees it, Benjamin should also be paying for his insurance and 100% of medical costs. Well, that's how my divorce is. Right. So. so in that sense, there is no order for child support. So to say he doesn't pay child support is true, but it's false because he's not, he's not ordered to. There, um, you, need, you need the context with it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the context of the fact that he doesn't pay child support, it's not because he's skirting an order to do so. It's because there is no requirement that he do so because of the nature of the 50-50 divorce. Correct. Um, okay. Additionally, though, like I say, as the court sees it and what it is, is that I take care of 100% of the financial obligations. So insurance, after school care, any school clothes mostly you know, his shoes, everything, it comes out of my pocket. Okay. Is he supposed to, is Ben supposed to share in those costs with you? I believe so. I mean, cause I have him during the week because of school. Um, and he has him on the weekend. So that's already not a 50, 50 split. Okay. So, so that was the, that's another question is that a lot of people have is, is <laughs> what kind of custody does, Ben actually have with Grayson as far as like what well, you the court order or your divorce decree says 50 50 but what's the reality of the situation the reality is that he takes him uh I say most weekends because I ask for one weekend every now and then um he has most weekends with his dad and I have him during the week okay so when he goes with his dad does he sleep on a cot in his pastor the room at the pastor's house <laughs> i d- i don't know like i'm assuming since he sh- is renting a room that maybe grayson is like sleeping in a bed next to his bed or i i don't know i've never okay, known so the, the specifics on that that situation just trust that he's doing the right thing as a father Yes, I mean, I trust that, you know, the kid has a place to sleep and, you know, he never comes back and tells me anything negative. So as a six year old, okay. would, well, right, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, no. OK, I understand that. I mean, a, a lot of people, uh, um, as you have seen, I, I put this out on the Facebook group, which is the Fraudcasters on Facebook group. If you haven't joined us, come join us. I put this out on the Facebook group about what kinds of questions people had for you 
And um, a lot of them have to do with, you know, how often does Grayson see Benny Boo, Mm -hmm. Katie asked. Um, You said just about every weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, I've also heard from Brother Ben that uh, he sometimes gives them back early on Sunday so we could have a watch party of the show with his church. <laughs> if, if, and that's brother, when, if that's what he was well, doing, yeah. He, he never tells me, like, why he's bringing them back early. Um, and early could be, like, two or one sometimes, depending. But my whole thing is I don't want him late because he has school. Right. So right. bringing him back at eight or nine is not acceptable for me. So it probably you have ends to get up, him down for bed. Exactly. And we wake up at five, so... Oh, yeah. (laughs) So and the reason why Brother Ben knows this is because Ben doesn't have a car. Correct. And because it was repossessed. So Brother Ben was driving him back and forth to pick up Grayson. Um, Yeah, he would like from you to like he was Ben's personal Uber driver. Well, I, I drop I drop him off on Fridays. And his brother will bring him back on Sundays. Okay. Okay. So he does, he helps out with it. Well, he did. I don't, he doesn't anymore is my understanding. Um, and we'll get into why, <laughs> from what I understand. You may not know this. I you may not have heard I this yet. I do not know the details. So <laughs> and we're going to get to that, but let's get to some of these other questions here. Um, Hula Baloo user says, will she answer anything about his drinking and his current financial situation? We've heard about the evictions and car repossession. What about now? How is he getting money to fly to Kenya? Is there anything you can answer? I have no clue. (laughs) I don't know. Um, Okay. I can assume maybe he's saving a lot of money by living in someone else's house. I can imagine that rent probably wouldn't be very much renting a room. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. So here, um, oh, here's an interesting question. Why, uh, Marsha asks, why is he so insecure that he felt he needed to endure such humiliation and arrogance from Akini and her family? Do you have any insight on that? That one's hard because, um, as I know from the, the TLC editing shenanigans, we don't know if they were really that bad. And I think that, you know, he signed up for the show because he was hoping TLC would maybe help pay for the K-1 visa, maybe. I don't know. Oh, okay. So The TLC, the, the sweet, sweet Matt Sharp money? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that may be and whenever he may get it, um, I, I kind of think that's why he, he signed up to endure. Like I said, he's, he's watched his show, so he knows better, right? So I don't know. Right. I have no well, clue why theoretically. he would put this on national television because it's just. So, okay. Somebody else asks, why did you allow Grayson to be featured on the show? Courtney asks that. And I get asked that a lot. Um, and, you know, when he asked me to ask, <laughs> asked, <laughs> asked me to. <laughs> okay, Robert. <laughs> That's all I can think about now. <laughs> when he came to me and uh, wanted him to be on the show, that was my what harm could it do moment. You know, like I know that TLC doesn't really do wrong by the children. Um, Generally not. No. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, my whole thing was like, sure, I want to make sure that, you know, he isn't being exploited. But at the same time, if they're going to at, at the time, I thought, tell the true story about him and his son, then what harm would it do you know and he was really only in one episode because that's the episode at the beginning where he's playing in a playground <laughs> yes <laughs> and i i understand that that playground actually is at your in your neighborhood that is in my neighborhood um which is funny <laughs> because uh as soon as that aired uh the community facebook went on fire like <laughs> Oh my God, that's our playground. And does he live here? And you know, that that's when that whole that whole storm of stuff happened. But yeah, that that is literally down like the sidewalk from my house. So So that was just TLC frauding about making it look like, you know, Ben took him to the playground, or does he actually really take Grayson to that playground? He Do doesn't take him to that playground. I know he takes him to whatever community playgrounds in his area sometimes. I mean, he okay. does stuff with him on the weekends. Um, 
but yeah, I think a combination also is that uh, Grayson had strep when he filmed that. Oh, so, so he was with you. He was with me because I took him to the doctor and all that jazz. And so that, that's why I was very happy that, you know, you filmed. You don't think that he's sick, but he was actually kind of like <laughs> low-key wow. miserable when you Oh, that. poor little Grayson. He's still adorable. That's why, you know, he's just like moving around. And I'm like, oh, poor kid is like, I want to go home. <laughs> oh, poor kid. Um, well, he was adorable. And um, so another question has to do, well, the, the, the big elephant in the room is, is Akini. And have you met Akini? Have you spoken with Akini? How do you feel about her? And I guess my last question on top of that whole package would be, do you have any advice for her? <laughs> um, so I have not spoken to her. I have not met her. Um, I look forward to it because my opinion on her is, is it's really hard to come up with one based on what I saw and seen on TV. Okay. Um, I, I really don't want to form an opinion based on the small clips that were edited to portray her in a certain light. So I think smart. the best thing I can do, especially if there's going to be any kind of cooperation with, um, you know, being around Grayson is that I need to meet her face to face and really get mm -hmm. to know her on a personal level. And, you know, whatever advice I have, I mean, I always say I'm not I'm not going to, you know, bite either, as uh, Benjamin said to the family. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that uh, when I do meet her, I'll be able to get to know her a lot better. Right now, that my opinion is nothing yeah, at the okay. moment. You know, it's not negative or positive. It's very neutral. Okay. Um, but, but I mean, you don't have anything negative to say about Akini. You're not anti-Akini. Nope. You want, you have said, I believe in, in some of your posts that, you know, you want Ben to be happy. And if this is what, you know, it, it is for him, then, you know, you support it. Yep. I mean, I, I always say if it's, if it's true love and I sound both sides, cause it's not, it's not my uh, job to give my input or anything, but if, if they're both happy, then, you know, good for them. I agree. I agree. My, uh, my ex-husband is remarried, and um, I, I remember right after I met her, this was before they got married, but um, I met her, and I remember texting him afterwards saying, you need to marry that girl. Aww. And um, yeah, and she's great. And we, you know, we have a really great, you know, um, co-parenting situation and between me and hetero life mate and my ex and his, his wife, um, my son's stepmom, it's all, we have a really good relationship, um, which is, is, I understand is kind of rare. <laughs> so, but, but hopefully, you know, you guys, you know, if, if Akini does end up coming over here, you know, you guys can have this you know a similar type of thing you know for the sake of grace and i know my son is very grateful that we all get along Hopefully. it wasn't always like that but <laughs> and, and there's there's always some rough patches because you know god god knows what he told her about me because everyone's story is always my ex is crazy <laughs> my ex right. did this my ex did that to kind of you know it, it seems like the the story point even in the tlc's uh, story for him was that he was the victim right and so, right. you know, always plays that victim very well. So yeah, I could just only imagine what, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, but the bottom line is you, when you and, and um, Ben got divorced, you didn't like rake him through the coals and take all his money, right? No, I didn't. And, and not being, not saying it in a rude way, there was none to take. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I, I think it's absurd, and I and I know this is going to start like a small dialogue for me because it's it's getting it off my chest, right? But, um, you know, everything I I was able to really bury the feelings I had about the divorce. You know, far far from it. Moving on, everyone's happy. Um, he even had a girlfriend before he was dating Akini, so you know we were both going on our separate ways. And so I think my major shock when seeing the first episode. And, and hearing the spin of I left him or the divorce left him broke. Uh-huh. That's not accurate. 
so not <laughs> so not accurate and it and it really kind of pissed me off because i didn't i didn't have a need to ask for anything but i didn't ask for anything you know the small things mm -hmm. i i literally took with me cuz people ask was a playstation and a tv <laughs> <laughs> and a bed frame that was too damn large to take anywhere anyways. Um, but, you know, as far as, like, splitting a house, there wasn't one. The car okay. was his. You know, so I, I don't know what left him broke in the divorce. But it, but it made for a good story. Oh, it made for a great story. Ben look like this, you know, popper and, you know, the victim and whatnot. And this is, this is the TLC frauding that, you know, my account and what I do is dedicated to is trying to pull back that curtain and say, no, this is all BS, you know, and the, the cast goes along with it, you know, for whatever reason, you know, just some to more extent than others. But, um, you know, on the, in this case, you know, TLC had a certain edit in mind that they wanted to to portray, and I think Ben was all too happy to to take with take that and run with it because, as we saw later at the tell all, um, and this leads into some stuff that you may not be as privy to, but at the tell all he talks about how his family wasn't supportive of the Akini marriage or whatever the ceremony and all of this stuff in the in the relationship. And from what I have been told by Brother Ben is that is completely bullshit. And this sort of leads to somebody had a question about the family dynamics. Um, what is his relationship like? Chris Sanchez asks, what is his relationship like with his family that there was little mention of his parents, siblings, etc.? Um, and brother Ben can probably answer some of this in the Facebook group or, um, on Instagram posts or whatnot, or maybe I'll bring him on for a quick interview. Who knows? But from what I understand is, um, the family was very supportive. And in fact, um, I have seen text chains, like text message chains where the family was reaching out to Ben and Ben wasn't returning their calls or texts so when when ben says oh they you know they didn't talk to me it was actually the other way around like they were reaching out they're supportive um brother ben was you know driving ben to you know get grayson back to you and all of this stuff so they were actively involved in his life and so for ben to throw the family under the bus like that at the tell-all and then later on like have questions on instagram where he wouldn't clarify that mm -hmm. and just said, thank you for your support. You know, and people would be like, oh, you know, sorry, your family is, is our assholes for not supporting you. And he'd be like, thank you for your support. And the family saw that and they're like, well, this is all bullshit. Like we totally supported him. We were there for him. We tried, we reached out and he's the one that ignored us to, if, the, if anybody was ignoring anybody, it was Ben ignoring them. So it provided a, a very messy backdrop to what has sort of since unfolded and why brother Ben has come forward publicly to be say, Hey, I'm the source of a lot of this stuff because he has ill feelings towards him in a way that you do not at all have ill feelings towards Ben. So it's been an interesting dynamic. Yeah. I mean, even, even like you you say, I'm, I'm surprised because when he was in Kenya, um, the only message I had gotten from his, gotten, <laughs> received from his family was, you know, have you heard from him? Because I'm assuming that, I mean, he's in a different country, one, so I don't know what his phone situation was. But, um, you know, if it gets to the point where you're asking the ex-wife <laughs> if they've heard from him, <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, no, he's out there and he got killed or eaten or oh, something no. like no like uh, my 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 first thought was something went wrong you know if he's going to a different country to meet somebody for the first time and he's mm -hmm. not responsive to his family i i'm, I'm assuming they were worried so but okay. i i don't know um i heard there was like a private chat but i wasn't in it obviously so i i don't know but for okay. whatever reason, they reached out to me at one point asking, where's Ben? 
don't know. Well, that's seems- <laughs> that, <laughs> don't know. Where's Ben? I don't know. <laughs> um, that reminds me, and this is going to date me of of um, the Wiggles. I don't know if any of you guys, if you're aware of the Wiggles, but you know, because I'm like a hundred years old. When my son was Grayson's age, there was this group called the Wiggles. Mm-hmm. It was these four men from Australia, yes. and one of their songs was always "Where's Jeff." You know, just, where's Jeff? Is he sleeping outside? Where's Jeff? You know, mm-hmm. all of these. So that's what I'm, you know, where's Ben? That's hilarious. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, well, the, you know, that what, what you say seems to to go, you know, to to corroborate what I was hearing and seeing about that, that group chat of Ben not being responsive to them. And so for him to turn around and say, his family wasn't supportive is inaccurate and um, probably, you know, that's not as much, I don't think, TLC frauding as it is Ben himself trying to portray this. Um, so that caused a lot of friction in um, with with Brother Ben. But, you know, for those who were asking about or saying that, you know, oh, she's going to come on and she's going to, you know, drag Ben or, and, and all the, you know, drag the father of her son and that's all not nice. She's not the one that was giving those that information. She actually re- refused my questions. <laughs> I, I reached out to her. I was I'm like, paranoid. hey. I'm so paranoid because <laughs> I was like, like, hey, give me some, you know, what what dirt can you give me? And she's like, mm, yeah, none. Sorry. And then it was only after the show was over that she finally agreed to come on and, and give her what appears to be her only interview at this point. Um, I don't know if she'll go on. You yeah, know, that's the, to no, do no, others. That's no one team. else is interested in um, <laughs> the I don't know. I don't know about that. Wife, you know, who wants to get Instagram <laughs> famous for being the ex of Benjamin of all things. Um, <laughs> right. Right. I mean, like, right, there's you guys. so many other things that I do in life that I'd love to be famous for. But, you know, that's not one of them. <laughs> right. Like you woke up in the morning, you wake up every morning and go, I wish that people knew me as the ex-wife of Benjamin. Right. And I mean, how it came about, because I'm, I'm still speculating, because I was being pretty careless when I commented on a post that kind of pissed me off, but whatever. And uh, I think I had said something like, well, I'm the mom and blah, 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 blah. And yeah. <laughs> so, and now it's out there. Everybody knows. I woke up the next day. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> I don't even know where I commented to go take it back. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't know if people can blame you. I mean, in the past, uh, in past seasons, we've seen exes come out of the woodwork and say some really nasty things, whether they were true, whether they were not true, whether they were actually exes. I mean, the, the stuff brings out the worst. That's honestly where I get a lot of information, you know, and then, of course, I have to go verify it given mm-hmm. the sources. But people come out of the woodwork and like to to drag these people. And give me all of the dirt on it. And that is not something that happened with you. <laughs> so I just want to make it clear to people that um, where where she's coming from with this. Is there anything else that you want to say about the show or to the listeners about Ben or about yourself? And then I've got one other question for you. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. I think... Uh... As I scroll through my own inbox of what people ask, and I, I skip over a lot of <laughs> what people ask. It's like, nope, can't talk about that one. Um, you know, people people do ask, why did I bother in the first place saying anything? You know? Oh, okay. I, I, I had an account that um, I still have. That's my private account that I've had since 2012. That probably has a lot of funny gold in it, but I locked it down <laughs> because... That's my private life, you know, and so I mm-hmm. have this fun account that I can comment on 90 Day Fiance, I can post stuff, I cannot, I can't, I can't you know, it's like a public, don't care. Um, but, you know, when I first, when I first came out to say anything, it was really in anger, probably, of how TLC portrayed him as the struggling father. Mm-hmm. who had nothing and was struggling to take care of his kid. And I know what struck a nerve was that that's my story. Mm. I'm the one who struggled and ate crap and skipped meals and 
worked my ass off and worked two jobs and made things work because he couldn't, right? Mm. And I know a lot of single moms, even in my inbox too, ask me that, you know, when, oh, I'm getting emotional. (laughs) When they come forward and say they can't, I still have to, you know? And so that's where I, I was seeing seeing the story and I, and I see for other people, it's just a show. It's lighthearted. It's don't worry about it. But for me, mm-hmm. it was almost a slap in the face. It was almost just ripping off all the effort I put into raising my son and everything I did. And I'm still doing on my mm-hmm. own and, and him profiting off of that. Wow. So that's why it means something to me to not only be vocal about some things, but, you know, the ripples it's caused in my socially for me, you know, I'm just now talking with um, his siblings. I'm just now reconnecting with his, his father over some fallout that happened with the divorce. So it's, it's been more than a show for me. I'm Mm -hmm. happy his segments are done. (laughs) So I can not care about the backstory of anyone again, but you know, that's, that's my piece. I've said it, you know. Wow. Um, (laughs) Well, that's, that's pretty intense and I'm going to lighten it up here as, as a longtime fan of the show, the listeners want to know is who is your favorite couple of all time? (laughs) My favorite couple. Well, there's two. It's always been George and Anfisa. Because she is unapologetically truthful. Like, (laughs) I was with her when she's like, I need nice things to look nice, duh. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, And that's also my mom's, one of my mom's favorites, too. And then, um, of course, Annie and David are always, always hilarious. So, like, Pillow Talk is usually, I'll watch it just because they're on it. Right. Um, right. And um, oh, I forgot the brothers. They're not brothers, but they're cousins, Tarek and. Um, oh, they're brothers. They are Dean actually brothers. I, yeah, I they're brothers. Someone say they were cousins, but. No, they're brothers. Yeah, those. So I know they're not a couple, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's OK. <laughs> they're a pair in that show. So, yeah, that that's my list. It's always. OK. OK. Excellent. Well, there you, there you have it. And, um, I'm, I will, before I move on to the closing, um, here, I want to just give you another thank you for taking your time out to appear on this and, and, and to guest host with me as I continue to, you know, move forward and restructure and try to sort of figure things out, um, moving forward. I want to thank you for sharing your story with us and, um, I hope that you guys all enjoyed it. Thank you. So as we want to close out, I just want to touch on a few things. I've got some a few shout outs from the dump uh, that I want to touch on. I've got uh, Rochelle, I believe, who she says, no message. Thanks. So hi. <laughs> um, Lori says, love your show. I'm glad to see you move forward. Your show is the first podcast I've ever listened to, and I enjoy it very much. So thank you very much, Lori. And then we have Katie who says, my husband and I are celebrating our sixth wedding anniversary on Tuesday, November 12th. Please give us a shout out. I'm a huge 90 day fiance junkie. Well, Katie and husband, Katie, congratulations on your sixth wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary. I'm so glad that you guys are fans and are listening. And I hope you guys have um, a great anniversary. Um. Let's see. Oh, our giveaway, this, our new giveaway, we had the last one was Tim's Boots, which uh, have been, are getting ready to go in the mail and to their winner, to their new home. And hopefully she'll post all kinds of pictures of us, of them, of where they're going. I want to see, I want to see Tim's Boots travel. (laughs) Traveling boots? Yes. (laughs) So everywhere they go, they need to take a picture of the boots. (laughs) Wherever they're going. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, the person who won them is in New York City, so I get to be mailing them there. So maybe we'll see some Empire State Building. Maybe <laughs> we'll see some, you know, Tim's Boots and the Statue of Liberty. Um, I don't know. But like that. And then there's also a picture 
of Tim that came along with it that he sent as an, a bonus. So maybe she can like put that on a stick and have flat Tim <laughs> and take pictures. Travel that would be Tim. awesome. Oh my God, you guys, it's awesome. Um, anyway, so the next giveaway that we're doing is you guys may have seen, if you haven't um, on my Instagram, for those of you guys who aren't following me on Instagram at frauded by TLC, uh, I have been Simpsonized. I've moved to Springfield with Bart and Lisa. And um, there's a lovely artist on Instagram. Her username is at Julia underscore black caviar. That's one word. And she does these amazing Simpsonized drawings of the cast members. And she did one of me and I was incredibly honored to have it. I totally want to print it out and put it up on my wall in my studio. She is going to be giving a lucky follower a Simpsonized drawing of up to four people in it. Hmm. So that is going to be the next giveaway that we're doing. And it'll be the same as last time is leaving a five-star review on iTunes um, or, you know, Apple Podcasts, uh, anywhere that you can. Um, I know on Facebook, there's a place where you can leave a review or if all else fails and you can't leave a review somewhere, make it an Instagram post and tag at the Fraudcast Instagram account. Send pictures of all of those to a screen cap of your review, the five star review and the comment. It doesn't matter what you say. It's not for my ego. It's for this weird iTunes algorithm. And just take a screenshot of it with the five star review with whatever comment you want to make and send it to the DMs of at the broadcast and we will draw a winner from those if you've already sent one in those will roll over from the past if you didn't win in the last one those will roll over so you don't need to send a new one in but if you haven't sent one in please send one in and you will be entered in the drawing for the simpsonized drawing of up to four people by at julia black caviar and that's fun i know yeah, her stuff is really blown up around instagram like I don't even know if she expected it. Like, <laughs> like all of a sudden, I was like, what is going on here? She does all, every, all the different cast members, and she'll post it with the picture she drew it from. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's great. It's a great, fun thing to have. I know a lot of people are interested in having that. I'm very excited that she's working with us in this in this collaboration. Um, if you want to see her work, you can go see her at Julia underscore Black Caviar. You can see her work there. Um, I have some of it on mine at Frauded by TLC. And um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. That will be as soon as this episode airs, that will run until Friday at midnight Eastern. And a winner will be drawn on Saturday again, like I did last week. Um, next week, what's coming up next week, you guys? I'm so excited about this. So. First of all, Hetero Life Made is making his return as a guest host on the show. Many of you guys have been asking him to have him back. And so I am going to have him back. I'm dragging him back in. I have to pay him a talent fee on top of his producing fee. Um, so thanks for that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, and the interview that I'm going to have next week, you guys, I'm completely starstruck about this interview is I'm going to interview our queen, Danielle Jabali. Like unbelievable. For those of you guys who don't know who Danielle is, Danielle is of Danielle Muhammad. She's the original 90 day queen. She was on season two of the original 90 day. She was on season one of Happily Ever After, and I believe she was on a What Now as well. She, season one of Happily Ever After is where the evidence binder was born. <laughs> she and Big Red Beth were stalking Muhammad and threatening to get him deported and screaming, I want my sex and all of this stuff. Oh, my God, that all originated <laughs> with her. So those of you guys who are new to the fandom and new to the show... You need to go back and watch the Danielle and Muhammad episodes of season two and then happily ever after season one because, oh, my God, she's our queen. She's memed everywhere. She's amazing. She has agreed to give me an interview, and that will be on next week's. So next week, stay tuned for Hetero Life Mate and Danielle. <laughs> Do you have anything else? No, that's going to be awesome, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Well, thank you again. Um, I want to thank um, Hanakawa. <laughs> I can't do it in Japanese. My son speaks Japanese. I can't. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah, he's taking Japanese in school. That's um, awesome. Yeah, so he can do it. I can't. Um, I can't speak any language. I would be terrible on this show. I would be terrible with a foreign fiance. Um, <laughs> but that's fine because I've got hetero life. Man There's phones school. now. You can just translate your conversations. So right, right, <laughs> which is something that we're seeing more and more of. Thanks, um, <laughs> Bull and Creamy, for bringing that out. So. With that all said, you guys, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you giving us your time again today. And I am frauded by TLC and I'm dumpster diving, so you don't have to. You can find your fraudcaster on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at frauded by TLC and on the web at talkersoffraud.com. This fraudcast has been produced and edited by yours truly, art by Sarah Dottie. Music written, produced, and performed by Umami. Segment producer at iHeartReality TV shows. Further assistance provided by many unnamed fraud consultants.